Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know that y'all have gotten a ton of amazing content today. So uh, just let me know at any point if you've got any questions as, as I go through. Um, one of the main things that, that we have talked about at this conference in the past is about media relations. So as, as y'all are uh, well aware, the sections are able to advocate for positions that the main bar cannot. So where that, that plays into media relations, a lot of times um, and between my office and, and you guys is that we will get media inquiries on specific topics that are um, applicable to your sections. And um, what we do is try to direct the reporter to the right person in your section. Usually if we don't know if, if a section doesn't have a subcommittee or something that really uh, identifies a contact person, we will refer the reporter to your website and to your executive executive counsel so that they have someone to contact and um, and can schedule an interview and, and talk to you about this issue. In the materials uh, that will be in the handbook, I believe that, that you guys will be getting next week, um, there are some tips on inter interfacing with the media, you know, trying to figure out where the reporter comes from, who do they work for, um, try to ask some questions about what they're looking for so that you are prepared for um, the tone um, and the type of, of information that they're looking for. What we can do is we can assist with that if you need help um, or if you're uncomfortable talking to a reporter, we can uh, kind of do that groundwork for you and find out more information about what, what they're looking for um, and then send that to you. But what we generally do is just direct it to the executive council, unless you guys let us know that there's a specific contact that you want us to uh, refer those calls to. Um, another thing that, that's kind of come up recently that I wanted to point out is that if you need a sounding board for something that you know is going to be a big media issue, um, please feel free to call me anytime to discuss. Um, it's a great example is the task force that was um, created by the uh, Real Property Pro Rate and Trust Law section that was looking into Surfside was, you know, they wanted to send out a release. They wanted to figure out what to name the task force, you know, all that kind of thing when it uh, they were trying to and trying to move quickly, um, we were able to contact the person that was selected as chair of the task force and kind of talk through some things, you know, maybe we need to tighten the task force name. Um, you know, maybe the release should go to these kind of people. Um, who do you want to copy? Do you want that release to go also to voluntary bars so that they know what's going on in your area? Um, that's just some of the things that that we can help you figure out. And, and you know, that's a, a an issue, issue that the big bar has as well as, you know, when we name things, we want to put everything about that thing in the name and it becomes way too cumbersome. So if it's the special committee on the perfection of the maculation of improvement of, you know, childhood, whatever, you know, we have to think about, let's make it as tight as possible as succinct and, and so that the media can grasp it. So that the public can grasp it. And it's easier to manage for, for you and your team. Um, but we can provide some of that counsel on on media relations and um, and how best to kind of tackle a big issue that you know is going to be covered by a lot of the media. Um, and and just so you know, I kind of just jumped right in there. Um, but I'm communications director, and in my office, I've got the Florida Bar's website. We have our voluntary bar liaison, who's amazing. Um, we have our uh, some general communications um, personnel, but we deal with, you know, multimedia presentations with presentations for the bar leadership, um, providing resources, um, both technological as well as graphics, uh, as well as social media, which is a big part of what we do. Um, but a, a part of all of that is that we are available if you have questions, you know, if you are launching something new, if you are trying to uh, branch into a different area um, or launch a new program, we would love to be a, of assistance. Um, and I know that a lot of the sections have people that they have contracted with for public relations or for communication support, um, but we certainly want to, to be a help and a resource as well if you need it. Or honestly, if you're um, if you're a vendor, 
if your contractor needs help or needs more information about kind of how the bar works uh, and how we can help, you know, we're, we're available at any time. But the, the media relations part is that we're going to automatically just refer reporters that are in your area to your leadership. Um, just let us know if we need a different contact person. Um, we try, if we know it's going to be contentious, to give you a heads up in advance. But obviously, sometimes with so many media calls coming in on a regular basis, that gets missed. Um, but I, I promise you that I will try. Um, and we're also understaffed as, as many people are at this point um, and are trying to get staff back up. So we're a little, it's a little hectic, uh, but we're still available and certainly email and uh, cell phone. Um, I'm available basically all the time unless I'm sleeping. So, um, but, but please, any questions, um, we, we would love to help. Um, the, the next thing that I want to cover quickly is social media and just to kind of give a brief um, overview of some best practices and where the bar is, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully it works. So the fun thing about the Zoom toolbar is, is it always covers the PowerPoint toolbar. So that's always a struggle for me. Um, so uh, here we go. So the Florida bar right now is on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Um, we launched Instagram last year. We have a, a total of probably about, and I haven't got the latest counts, but I think we're up to probably about 50,000 between Twitter and Facebook. Um, we post a lot of content. Um, we post all of the, the uh, bar news articles, top stories of the day, um, voluntary bar content, content from the ABA, as well as um, any good news that we find on lawyers and, and everything they're, do they're doing across Florida. Those are kind of the main content buckets. Um, but there's a lot of content there that you are welcome and encouraged to share on your social media accounts. So if your uh, team is kind of struggling with what to post, it's very easy to find something on the Florida Bar's account that you can share and just add a quick comment um, and, and we can provide that resource uh, as well as you tagging us and we can share your content depending on, on what it is. This is kind of an old graphic, but it's a great way to just kind of illustrate how, you know, once you create one thing, whether it's a video, a podcast, um, materials, you know, slides from a presentation, um, these can all be used in multiple forms across social media. And it's, it's a great way to get your content out to very different audiences as well. So if you have a, a photograph, um, you know, you can post it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Obviously, Instagram is going to be a more, um, a more visual platform um, than Twitter. So you might want to prioritize different contents on on, you know, different platforms, but a video now with um, Facebook and Instagram, both prioritizing video content, even if you can't, you know, do the full thing, maybe you just put part of it as a reel or a story and then direct them back to the original content, um, wherever that lives, whether it's on your website or, or YouTube, there's just so many different ways to use one piece of content to, to go to on so many different forms. And then you can use those content also in your presentations, um, in your newsletters and your reports back to your membership on everything that you're doing. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's a good way to just kind of think of, of the content that you create and the things that you're doing like events and promotion, how you can kind of um, cover all of those different areas. Um, you know, sharing articles, is always a good uh, a good piece of content. There's obviously a lot of people out there writing about different things that uh, Florida Bar members would be interested in, whether it's technology, whether it's practice area, court news, et cetera. Um, the um, reptile section did a, a cute 
um, little video for wrapping up an event. So not only do you post the event, but make sure to do some follow up afterwards with great pictures or video. And it doesn't have to be intense. It can be a short video that can just add some variety and, and some human faces to your content. Um, and I'm sure most of you have seen Animal Law Section um, excels at finding the quirky content. So hopefully you were able to celebrate Happy National Tarantula Appreciation Day. Um, but if you need a, a good story about uh, Florida Bar members and animals, I'm sure that they would love to share some of their content with all of you. And, and as uh, Maria said before, anything with a dog or a baby is going to get coverage. And it's, it's the craziest thing on our YouTube stats. You know, we did, we've done so many different kinds of video content over the years, but the, it's always going to be a dog. It's always going to be a baby. Those are always going to be the videos that, that get the most, get the most coverage. Um, and, and this, sorry, I did the, that one twice on accident, but um, promotion of events, you know, creating that Facebook event as well as, um, you know, being able to do graphics and promote your speakers. I know that a lot of you are doing some incredible CLEs out there. So you really want to make sure that you're sharing that on all of the platforms and, and giving your members the ability to, to mark interested. And um, there's, you know, psychological research on if you see an event and you see that your friends are going, then you're going to get more people going. So that's why Facebook events are so great for promoting is your members can see who else is going. And the more you can get, even if they just mark interested versus going, then you can get that, that snowball of people attending and, and with their friends. Um, here's some examples of stories and Instagram has made stories very easy, an easy way to share content. So you can share stories coming from your members, um, from local organization partners that you work with. Um, it's just an easy way to share fun content. And the, if you have a law school in your area, obviously they have incredible content that you can share. And it's always a, a feel-good story to encourage the local law students and, and young lawyers in your area. So that's that's always fun. Well, and, and it's fun. You can add little GIFs and, and movement and, and graphics very easily. Um, so it's kind of a painless way to, to have some a different kind of content. Um, Love this picture. Um, Pills, um, it does a great job of, of sharing their members and, and something. We Images and videos are going to be the best way to, to show off what, what your team and what this, your section is doing. Um, I think that we've all learned not to just put text on Facebook and send it off, but just to kind of reiterate, videos and, and images are very critical. There are a lot of free um, video and picture resources out there. Um, there's three on the screen, Pixabay, Pixels.com, and Tonal, which is a newer one that actually does an incredible job of more diverse photos of uh, professionals. I would caution you that even though these are free images, make sure to read the fine print on the image to see if you, they need to be credited because that can be a copyright issue. Also, don't just Google images and use them because you can get in some trouble with copyright. So try to use the free stock sites. Um, check the fine print on whether you need to credit them. Um, but but I want to encourage you to use pictures and, and try to, you know, make the best visual content that you can for your for whatever initiatives you're you're pulling. Um, you also want to be careful about the cropping of pictures and how Facebook arranges them for you. So just kind of pay attention to that, because sometimes when there are multiple pictures, they can crop things weird and you get odd images, let's say. I think I have an example on one of these. So, um, also encourage you to edit, even if it's just doing a quick, the auto edit on your phone or um, within the app um, to lighten it up. It's It makes a big difference just kind of on the visual presentation. Okay, here's a good one. It's an old article, but you can see how this, this link cropped um, once it was posted on um, Twitter and you're just seeing the top of 
you know, this person said. Um, so just that's just kind of something to be aware of um, and want to show how good this criminal law section graphic looked with it cropping the right size on Twitter. It's amazing how how um, how powerful it is to have things that, that fit the platform correctly. Now, Twitter has changed their settings recently so that they you show the full photo, but it still looks really good on the timeline and on your feed if it's cropped kind of in the traditional Twitter format. Um, these just a couple other images on um, this this Henry Latimer one is promoting a podcast. So that's just another kind of content for those of you that are doing podcasts. Um, and even if you aren't, um, if there are circuits, a lot of the courts now are doing podcasts, you can share that content. Um, we would also encourage you to change up your cover photo for Facebook regularly. It just kind of um, freshens it and and uh, draws the eye for, for your members and, and kind of jazz up your profile. Um, for those that are daunted by um, using social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram have done, a, and even Twitter at this point, have added a lot of scheduling options. So if you have a social media volunteer in your section that's handling it, or if it's you, um, you can just set aside some time and schedule things out for the week, especially when you have events to promote and things that are time certain that you can plan ahead and go ahead and get those scheduled and not worry about it. I would caution you, though, to have an, an emergency person so that there, if there is a natural disaster, if there is a huge um, news event that happens for Florida, your community, et cetera, to go turn off the scheduling. Um, because you don't want to accidentally post something that's scheduled that's lighthearted in the middle of a national catastrophe if that happens. And unfortunately, we, we've had to do that with the bar several times um, between, you know, the pandemic and, and other and hurricanes, you know, just you just have to turn off all the scheduling and, and make sure that you're just posting the most important information. Um, and this is just uh, the scheduling. You can schedule Twitter threads, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, and, and this is just a tip on engagement. You need to have somebody assigned that's going to keep up with messages and comments and, and just kind of monitor whether that's traded off uh, between a group or um, you have somebody assigned to it. It's just much easier to keep up with it if you're kind of regularly checking those things and replying to questions and engagement, et cetera. Um, we would also encourage you with your uh, page the individual can go on and invite other people to the page. So if you've got uh, members who have good networks, you know, ask them to invite other people to your page so that you can um, grow that engagement. And the more conversation you have in the comments and the more sharing, the more that Facebook will elevate your content and bring it in front of more eyes. They really are prioritizing conversation between individuals, um, which is a struggle for pages because our content is just not seen as optimal um, under Facebook's regime. Um, but it's, you know, just got to keep the confirmation, the uh, conversations going. Um, and this is about tagging. Please tag us in anything you post that you want us to share. Um, we are monitoring a lot of content, as you can imagine. So that just helps us see it. Uh, but also tag your partners, your members, and, and give them that love on social media as well. Advertising. So if you have a little bit of budget, you can boost um you know, your posts for as little as $5. Um, and especially for when you're promoting events, that can be an easy way to kind of get the word out in a, in a more uh, organized way. And Facebook does prioritize those, those paid posts. Um, and you can target by area, different uh, keywords and, and demographics. And if you want more help with that side of it, please feel free to reach out to Danny Aller or myself and, and we can walk you through the first couple promoted posts. And then um, you can see 
the the results. And it gives you a lot of good data on the backside so that you can see, you know, who saw it and, and how many eyes were laid on it. So it kind of helps uh, with measurables on getting it out. Um, that's just kind of what the what the boost looks like once you hit that. And you can pick, you know, age range, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and there's my contact information. So that was just kind of the quick hit on um, social media, just because I'm not sure how many of you are actually running the social media accounts or if you have a volunteer doing it. Um, but what we can do is uh, provide this PowerPoint um, if you need it. And if you need to share it with anybody, we can share those resources with you. Um, another thing that our office does is we help the sections with um, our informs email marketing. Um, and I know a lot of, well, some are using um, other services, et cetera, but for those that are using the bar services, um, and Forms has done a great job of making it much easier for us to put together emails that look professional, that look polished and get them out to our membership. Um, and we can target those and, and do a lot of things that make it automated. So um, Jeremy, uh, who's in the programs division, is a genius at the campaigns where you set up a campaign it goes to the initial push. Let's say it's all section members. And then depending on what people do, they get a follow-up email. So for everybody who didn't open the email, then they get a reminder in a week, et cetera. Um, so it has a lot of automation in it that's great and gives you a lot of data on the on the back end as well on who opened it um, and, and who didn't and kind of what actions were taken, what did they click on, et cetera. Um, something that I would like to, you know, keep have y'all keep in mind, though, is that with emails, um, every email that comes from a bar section committee or the big bar from the member side is considered an email from the bar. So we, we are uh, constantly struggling with the volume of communications that are going out to bar members. Um, so we want to encourage you to work with your program administrator to make sure that it's the right balance of, of how many times you email your members just because we do get a lot of unsubscribes and opt-outs on emails if they're getting too many of them. Um, and that means they will not be seeing any more of your content once that happens. So we want to be very careful about, about the volume that goes out. Um, let's see. Oh, my gosh. We, um, we're also talking to a vendor about uh, examining the bar's branding overhaul, overall in all of our publications, including section um, newsletters and um, logos and, and just this and this is not as a like an overseer kind of role. It's to make sure that we're assisting you as as much as possible, and and making sure that everything is ADA compliant, um, that it's social media and digital friendly, um, and that it, you know you are putting your your best foot forward. Um, so that and that's our overarching goal. But once we work with the vendor, have them do the audit of all of our products across the spectrum, um, then we'll share that information with you um, and then you know we can decide whether changes need to be made or not um, depending on on your content and and how you're reaching out to members and we can also help you kind of identify some of those metrics or you know are people clicking on that pdf newsletter are they sharing it is it easy to put on social media all of those kind of things and and help each section develop kind of a plan forward to to upgrade their communications um, but that's you know, in the future, and, and we'll talk more about that at a, at a future rate. Um, but regardless, there's my email, there's my cell phone. If you ever have questions about anything regarding communications at the bar, the website, social media, et cetera, we are here to help um, and, and are ready, you know, to, to assist in any way we can. I think that's it. Uh, but does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions on the chat. I'm sorry I moved through that pretty quickly, but I'm only two minutes over, so I'm pretty excited. Yes, that was very informative. It covered a lot of areas.
looks like there's a question here. Um, we we don't uh, because we don't uh, we our office doesn't use anything any tools to manage our social media. Uh, I'm assu- I'm assuming you're um, talking about stuff let's like read the route. question. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. Has the bar negotiated discounts or provide recommendations for software to manage multiple social media accounts for sections of members? We don't have anything right now. Um, we actually, because our office alone is monitoring 30 different social media accounts, we are actually looking into whether we need to have a little bit of help on the digital side to, to manage all of that, um, because we not only do the bar's accounts, the president's account, Wildy, um, law school division. Um, we're helping with a lot of the internal uh, bar committees, programs, initiatives, and offices. Um, so it's it's a lot. Um, but short answer is no. But if there's one that you're looking into or you're interested in, um, and you have any questions about its features or how effective it might be. Um, just email it to me and I can take a look just because we're looking at some of them right now as well. 